conference wack the people of all countries present today special greetings to uh, the organizers and to all those who have made this event possible four years further down the track from last time uh, my 12 minute discussion using Ainu timekeeping is going to cover what it might mean to find a connection between archaeology, cultural heritage, museums, and indigeneity. I will challenge the concept of indigeneity in an, in an inclusive way by seeking us to cast back to a recent past, to when WAC formed 30 years ago, when such a concept of a global indigenous movement was, if not in its infancy, still being conceived. The concept that my students enjoy using is being pre-indigenous, one of kin accountability prior to being swept up in an ethnic global movement that has conveniently provided, usefully provided, a platform for discussion amongst wider groups that carry similar beliefs in terms of their relationship to lands at a national level and their engagement with disciplines such as archaeology, ethnography, anthropology, history, etc. The challenge, however, in creating a space to talk to each other rather than past each other has been to not forget those who still live on the land and maintain the knowledge systems of their ancestors, the responsibilities, the obligations, the accountabilities, the duties in service, not just to their ancestors, not just to those living today, but to those in the future yet to come. I can but only speak for my ancestry, but in speaking for my ancestry, I reach out to all those, many everyone sitting here today, who have ancestors and have their own trajectory that bring you to this space at WAC 8, to this plenary session. But in particular, for my ancestry, we belong to a civilization over 5,000 years old, yet we have been constrained by an education system that suggests our history only started 800 years ago when our ancestors first touched the lands of Aotearoa, New Zealand. The images you see here on screen are images that have been carried in our hearts and in our patterns on the landscape representing connection to past, present and future. We call them Marae, or Ahu, or Atia, Marae Atia, or Papa Kainga, Pa Kainga. We keep track of these memories of past places through our ancestral objects to which we belong. You see an image to the right. That image is called Kaoreore. 
represents the Pounamu, the green stone from which the great waka, the great voyaging vessels of our ancestors were carved. And later these very powerful implements were refashioned again into weapons or perhaps ornaments or perhaps memories to the past. These marae we have carried for and what they represent as navigational systems to track our path, our culture, our civilization across the Pacific for over the three, four, five thousand years. They continue today. The bottom right corner shows what our pa became, sculptured landscapes, patterns of civilization, of identity, of power, of energy over resources. A sophisticated way of engaging the universe. So that was the past. Then 30 years ago, the same time that WAC came into being, our people found ourselves in a nation struggling for identity, struggling for purpose at the very time that Britain entered the EU. Funny how 30 years later they're now exiting the EU. <laughs> Meanwhile, we were trying to enter being part of a nation in partnership. And 30 years ago, our, to use an Aboriginal black fella term, our white fellas, our Pākehā, our Palangi, thought it would be very cool to take on the identity of the local indigenous people, the Māori, as part of their national Pacific re-centering of economy. The Te Māori exhibition provided that vehicle, swept up a small little Pacific nation of just over three million people in a common purpose, a purpose of nurturing a new identity beyond being British. And to the right of this image, that's my grandfather. His name's Pukaki, and I've worked really hard to sport a very similar hairstyle. <laughs> Today, these marae of our ancestors are surrounded by urban cities in some cases, but in most cases are surrounded by Fonterra to those from New Zealand. Some of you will know what Fonterra is. It's the industry of dairy cattle. We have nine million living dairy cows in New Zealand. Four and a half million living people. I won't go any further about what happens to um, after these cows have eaten the grass and where it goes. But we do have our issues over water and uh, the present continues to challenge us. Not least because most of our young people today live in these urban environments disassociated, disconnected from those environments of our grandparents, from the environment I grew up as a child, but then later, like my parents, having to move to the cities to survive, to put bread on the table for their children, to provide an education within the dominant society that we call New Zealand. And in some cases, very recently, we are starting to feel the effects both at home and away. Last week, we learned 40, over 42,000 people live in cars in New Zealand. The vast majority of those living in cars are Māori. And of those, 21,000 are children. They no longer have land on which to live or a place to call home beyond a vehicle with four doors. Yet they've all come out of bottom right corner, out of situations where once it was a thriving community, socially, economically, politically, part of a three, four thousand year old, five thousand year old civilization, unbroken knowledge and identity despite the colonization. But today we have crisis, today we have a culture that is struggling to find purpose. We take our hats off to the academics, 
that seek to bind us together again through education, through universities, through radicalization. But we can't forget the people still living at home that keep the fires burning. So working in museums, my background, was to find a passage, a roadway by which we could connect those growing up in cities with those living at home. From a Māori perspective, we speak of the most important thing in the world is people. To be a people, we need to know from where we came. We need to have a state that recognises and cherishes our right to be partners in the future. We have all been children, going back to the beginning of time, and the images of my grandparents when they were children, long past now. They had hopes, they had dreams, they were naughty, they were people. We thought of ourselves before 1900, we were told we were native. But we knew ourselves as the people of this ancestor or the people of that ancestor. Then in the 1970s, 1980s, thanks to the work of Ngata in the 1910s, 1920s, calling ourselves Māori became a label of pride. It didn't take away from our differences as independent nations of people through our marae, 766 marae in the country, but we could collectively call ourselves Māori. Simply translates, normal. Everyone else? Abnormal. Or to use Gene Wilder's just passed away, Abbey normal. So being Māori, that was us being normal. That was us still living under the protection of our elders, our ancestors, still living in cities back in the 70s and 80s, but going home. We knew the pathway home. And in going home, we brought home from time to time our ancestors. And during that time, we collectively came together as many different tribal groups to become an iwi. Iwi translates to bones, to our ancestors. So when we came together as multiple groups of marae, we came together under the common ancestry of our ancestors, of our iwi. And then when we engage with other iwi from across other spaces of oceans, then we also can be indigenous, such as this uh, moment in 2007 when the Māori brought their ancestors onto the land of the Eora people in Sydney and were greeted by them, the home people, to share our treasures, our ancestors, with those Māori living in Australia, disconnected from their home communities. A collaborative exhibition. But we can also be pre-Indigenous in this modern world. We can also celebrate the very essence of what it means to belong to an ancestral landscape through the burial of our leaders, of our loved ones, of our elders, of our children. We may use Catholic or Ratan or, or Church of England religions. But we don't forget it's all about service and it's all about purpose. Without purpose, where are we going as a people, as a nation, as a global condition called humanity? Our tribe has a very simple way of explaining that. We call it the Takarangi spiral the spiral of creation. And this is our roadmap from the past to the future, recognising the knowledge and the protection of heritage that our elders pro uh, provide 
versus those who seek to explore and cross the oceans, find new islands, and maybe get another chief's daughter pregnant. Both ways, it's about the balance between heritage and opportunity, the past and the future. We live right in that moment of the present. And the concept we also use is whakapapa. It's a Māori cultural specific term, an ontology, you might think. It means to layer time, to layer memory, to layer knowledge. The future of archaeology, heritage and museums, what might that be? How might the dead better guide us the living? What is our purpose if we are not talking to each other? What is the purpose of the disciplines of archaeology, of heritage, of museums, if they cannot serve the people who are the source of their discipline? To finish, if we sever people from the land, we sever them from their identity. And it's not just us. Kia ora.